The first time she saw it, um, she kept asking me, where did you get that from? Like, you gotta take it out. You can't have that. I think she never really understood the concept of uh, being filmed. You know, I, I, I walked around with her in town and she would introduce me as her uh, photographer. <laughs> and um, it was an interesting progress because uh, eventually she did start understanding that this was being documented and then she would start like screening what she would tell me so at first she was very like you know open and semi talks about everything but then later on I, would, I needed really really like a lot of time and an effort to get her to open up so, so Yaniv and I uh, went to theatre school together uh, back in New York and, uh, and we stayed in touch and I'd, I'd made my way out to LA a little, a little earlier and so when he came by, he'd been shooting Mimi on, her, on his cell phone pretty much which is why there's some grainy footage in there uh, but he'd been shooting her on his cell phone which is also probably why she didn't really understand that she was being filmed uh, for like three years um, of those five years and then when I came on board it was much more like okay cool let's get a you know a DP a cinematographer in and, and I brought in my friend Andrew to shoot uh, all the interviews with the other people and also to start shooting properly and and getting some clean footage in there for those later interviews and obviously to get Zach was important too because he plays such an instrumental role in her life and uh, and for her that was like something that you know, we, we didn't know if he would agree to be part of it. And uh, and he's just, because originally, like, he really wanted it to be something that he did that no one knew about that just made him aware and him feel the way he feels about her. Um, so he was very generous by agreeing to be part of it as well and bringing the editor on board and all that sort of stuff. But, yeah, so, um, yeah, but yeah, Niv and I go back to, to, like, 2001 or so. but. Uh, this is the first project that we've kind of actively worked on together. What happened was uh, when I started shooting the, uh, I mean film, I was like, oh my god, who is this lady? I must get her on, you know, like, I, I wanted to, to capture that, that thing and I just, we became friends over the coffee shop and the laundromat that we will exchange coffee for dirty rags, uh, coffee rags. and. Uh, so I said, can we do a little interview? Like, do you mind? And she said, you know, sure, yeah, why not? Let's do it. And then the more I did this, the more I realized, wow, maybe there's, you know, maybe it could be a short film. And then the more I dug and the more I researched and the more I got to know her, the more I realized that this is actually a story. And that's, that's when I contacted my producer and a uh, very good friend in LA, Elliot, and I said, you know, we we need. I think I think there's a there's a possibly a documentary there. So that's when we started uh, taking it more seriously. And uh, eventually, when I thought I was done sh uh, shooting, way before the daughter, uh, we uh, did a, a Kickstarter campaign, and uh, we thought we needed eighteen thousand dollars, but it turned out we needed a lot more. But we were lucky because we raised uh, thirty-two thousand dollars, which a lot of that money came from the community. Again, people at the coffee shop and people, you know, knew Mimi or knew me or knew me. Sorry, me, Mimi. <laughs> it's kind of confusing. But uh, so I mean, the support was just unbelievable. I remember telling uh, this couple at the coffee shop way after my campaign on Kickstarter. I said, "Yeah, I, I just, you know, I did." Kickstarter campaign and like where were you guys? I, I was joking and then they were like oh well, what is it about and then I told them the story the very next day they walked into the cafe at 8 o'clock in the morning and uh, I was also sorry I'm gonna take it back I was joking with them and asked them if they were the anonymous $500 donation and you know they're like yeah yeah that was us exactly the very next day they come in and, and, and uh, the husband says I have uh, good news and bad news the bad news is that uh, we're not the anonymous $500, but uh, here is a $10,000 check for your film. And uh, that, that's the kind of, I mean, the community, again. She's, she's still doing great. She still goes to work every day, seven days a week, really. Goes out at night. Um, sometimes, you know, actually no, the doctor told her that she can. I was really, it was interesting. A lot of people ask me, so is she an alcoholic? 
I thought so. I, I mean, I thought many things about her, but when her doctor uh, last year said, you know, you can't drink alcohol anymore, you're getting to that place in your life. And I asked her, Mimi, are you okay with, like, are you okay with not drinking alcohol? And she's like, yeah, of course. And so she's not, and she's totally fine. Yeah, one of the nicest things that I, I've heard after the film actually is one from one of the uh, shop owners on the street. She said, you know, thank you for doing what you did because she's like, I see how people look up to Mimi now and they actually acknowledge her and like, you know, come up to her as if she was, she is a celebrity. And I guess prior to that, it was, you know, 50-50. Some people thought she was crazy and you can actually go to Yelp uh, reviews of the laundromat and see some reviews that saying, who is that crazy lady on the bench? <laughs> And, you know, and the other half, they love her. I mean, how can you not love the... I'm going to go to the Yelp review and just say, <laughs> I just saw this fantastic movie at the festival. Thank you. So, yeah, I mean, she, uh, I, I think her pride is also, she really feels, you know, she feels special. She feels, she feels uh, uh, noticed. She feels part of uh, the community, the amazing community that we have in Santa Monica. And I feel like... I wish that more people like her could, you know, come to the to the front. So, yeah, I mean that that screening that screening at the Aero um, was on Montana Avenue, so that was about a hundred meters. That was a couple hundred feet from where she is at the laundromat every day, and so all these people were starting to see her dressed up outside this place. So even the people that were just walking by, wondering what the line was for. Um, were like rediscovering who she was, thinking, oh, it's that homeless woman that I've seen years and years and years. Yeah. And, the cool, and the other thing that was really special about that was that was her 89th birthday. Oh. Yeah, she's, which is... She's turning 90 in August. See? So imagine if we knew all the stories of all those people that were just like in the backgrounds and in these doorways and all, in all these things. And, Every now and then we get to discover someone like this, but imagine all those stories that are out there.